Uh, I'm Michael Bean. It's Monday, July 6th. This is your free lesson for myfreeactingclass.com. Uh, if you want to see recorded lessons, for instance, instance uh, we had Jesse James Miller, uh, filmmaker, join us on Friday. I'm going to upload that as soon as this is over. I'm going to post it to the Confidence on Camera Facebook group. I'm going to post it uh, also if you go to confidenceoncamera.com, uh, you can find a link to all of those videos. So if you want to see everything that we've been doing. Uh, today, the plan is we're going to talk about self-tapes. Uh, I'm going to, uh, because you're probably tired of hearing me talk about it, I'm going to show you some clips from two different casting directors uh, who came in at, uh, on previous versions of uh, this and talked to us about all the things and gave me permission to record them and to uh, share it with the world. Those are actually also, you can find those in the, um, the, the YouTube channel if you want to go watch the whole thing. Uh, and then we're gonna go over sh two short scripts. Uh, I don't know if Caden's uh, with us today, um, but I told Caden that I would have a like short kid script uh, and then uh, there's like a short adult script. You know, Mondays, I like talking about uh, camera technique and physicality, so how you can bring yourself to these things. Uh, if you do not want me to talk about your camera setup and you don't want me to ask you to help out, all you have to do is turn off your video. And then I will not call upon you because <laughs> it's like, ha, oh, I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, if, however, uh, you're open to me saying like, hey, look at this, here's something that's relevant, you know, the eye light or eye line or the background or whatever, uh, or calling on you to uh, do an example, uh, then uh, just leave it as is. Um, when we get to the example portion, um, I'm going to need the folks who are doing examples to be able to stand up. Uh, the right so that's about 15 minutes from now you don't have to sort of like move everything around right now but both of the example scripts today involve somebody standing up you know and I, people in class all the time lately have been like trying to do their standing up scene sitting they're like hang on I'll just go get it and it just like it just doesn't work it doesn't tell the story in the same way so um, I will uh, when we get to that point I will ask you uh, for the moment, let's start by looking at Maureen Webb, uh, uh, who is one, uh, one of the casting directors who joined us. Now, Maureen didn't want her session to be taped, uh, but uh, she did say that she would share with us her guidelines. Uh, the, they put together, her casting office put together a two-page guideline sheet for self-tapes. Yeah, and I probably don't need to go over this with you, but just so you all know, uh, self-tapes are the future. <laughs> Uh, the, and it is entirely possible that by the time there is a vaccine and we can all be less than six feet away from each other, everybody's going to be so used to self-tapes, they're just going to keep doing them. Voiceover artists have all been auditioning for home, from home for years. You know, the, uh, Maddox, I know you do a lot of that. Is that accurate? Like, the first auditions are usually at home? You know, just like you recording? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Take, take it, one voiceover artist agrees. Uh, the, uh, and so likely that's going to happen uh, with at least some percentage and possibly a large percentage of our auditions. So let's figure out what casting directors like and what they want and try and get it like a really good self-tape setup. It's not rocket science. Um, the, and uh, today, instead of my words, uh, let's use casting director's words. So we'll start with Marine Webb. Uh, Web Bolton Casting, self-tape instructions. Please don't feel the need to pay for studio space. It is not necessary. As long as you have a decent camera on your cell phone and a tripod, the quality will be just fine. It helps to have good lighting and an expensive video ring light can help. I've actually seen it work great if you just have a big lamp and you put it right in front of you. Uh, you want your, also the camera to be at love, the level with your eyes. Make sure you include a full body slate of your name and height at the end of your audition. Do not include agency stats before your tape. These can be the end if you want to include them, but they're not necessary. Now, this is specific to Maureen Webb and Colin Bolton, you know, to Webb Bolton casting. Some of them like it at the beginning, some of them like it at the end. Uh, make sure you film the audition in landscape mode, not portrait mode. So your, and your face and shoulders are in the frame below as an example. So you can see there's no space above his head, you know, and it is just down to just below his armpit. So the same frame that I'm in when I'm talking to you right now. You know, and for reference, if I'm way back here, it may not seem like a huge difference, but you're not going to see as much detail of how I'm feeling, and I'm not going to seem like as good an actor. So it's a really simple thing. 
film your tape against the wall, it's only one color. You don't have a neutral color screen, usually blue or gray. Muted walls work just fine. Gray, blue, and white walls can work. No distracting backgrounds, please. For an example of a distracting background, let's go to, we did this last time, but they're still here. So, there's the twins. Look at how distracting. There's all this art. There's cool stuffed animals. There's baby pictures. There's like a thousand things to look at that aren't them. You know, the, so, that's an example of a distracting background. You don't want to have one of those. You want to have a nice clean background, like say we've got on Christina here uh, or uh, on Linda here, right? Like if there's a light reflected in her eyes, there's a neutral background, it doesn't matter what color it is. You know? So it's not like you don't have to go and get a blue sheet like mine, you don't have to paint a back wall blue. You just need something that's not distracting. Uh, film, try and film in a place with lots of natural light. You don't need to purchase professional lights. If you're filming at night, and only have overhead lighting, you run the risk of getting a lot of shadows in your tape. Make sure you have a reader. Do not record your own voice as a reader if you can avoid it. Especially now, there's no reason you have not to have like some friend of yours, anybody, uh, Zoom in, FaceTime in, on the speaker, on your cell phone. You have somebody else read the lines because the timing's just gonna work better there. Uh, they, here's how they want it formatted at, uh, the, uh, at Web Bolton. Edit your scenes together uh, and, and rename the file. The, uh, make sure you send your agent your tape in a downloadable format. Hang on one second, folks. I, there's somebody shouting in the background here, and I'm just going to go and see if I can remind them when I'm teaching. Uh, the, and then uh, we transfer in file mail for your services are basically like send it uh, to uh, downloadable Vimeo or Dropbox link. Don't post it to YouTube with like, hey, you know, confidential audition for everyone. So uh, there's the web bulletin, uh, like some quick go over. I thought I would also share uh, some quick clips. First from, uh, this is this, uh, first from Tiffany Mac. Um, obviously they're all recorded and produced separately. But is it generally preferred that if I'm auditioning, this is Tiffany right here, roles, that I attach them all in a single large file sequentially, or that I send them all as separate files? Separate files, for sure. Uh, the reason is one: if we're going to set. So I just want to point out that Tiffany's answer is the complete opposite of what they said in the web bulletin breakdown, where they said put them all in one file. Now Tiffany is going to explain why she prefers separate files. To the producers that make it easy for us by just having us choose which role we want to send you for. If we want to send you for all the roles, we can just attach all the files. Um, the second reason is usually when I'm reviewing self tapes, if they're downloaded for me and separated into each role. So if you're reading for the role of Zachary, I just want that role. I want that as a separate one. So definitely separate if you could. Also, if you guys have the option of doing multiple takes for a scene, like some of those will say in my self-tape notes, feel free to send me two takes and I'll send whichever one is better. Um, please separate those into separate files as well. Um, if you separate them into one file, you probably think you're doing me a favor, but actually it means that it's like one take that I hope will sell you better than the other one. And we have to go and upload your file into iMovie and cut out your the stuff we don't want to send on. So it actually saves us a lot of time. We just send them in. When in doubt, send separate files for everything. For your slate, for multiple takes, for multiple roles. Awesome. Ta-da! There. And uh, just to mix it up, uh, Jack Lind, uh, because even if you've watched it before, it's probably a good idea to hear it again. Quick, quick questions. First, um, you were mentioning that self tapes. You were mentioning that self tapes aren't as useless now. Were they useless before? Did you watch them? This is Jackie Lind right here. Um, we watch every single tape that came in to our office. They were never useless. We've cast lots of people from self tape, okay. but the problem was is ninety percent of them were terrible. Ninety percent of them were terrible. Okay, so we are several months into quarantine now. Probably the percentages are going up, but if ninety percent of them were terrible, you know that's great news for you. If you are in uh, figuring out how to do a quality self-tape, you know, hopefully a whole bunch of people are still just taping them you know, with their phones and their own recorded voices and terrible lighting because honestly, casting probably won't fully watch those. Um, so a year from now, 
likely those percentages are going to be completely flipped and 90% of them are going to be quality, but right now it's potentially a competitive advantage figuring this stuff out. Oh, so if they're not a good self type, it's a waste of my time, it's a waste of your time, and and we wouldn't be able to present it. Right, gotcha. And the other question is, uh, even if we have it memorized, would you prefer us to bring the script in the room? Uh, okay. And then if you want you know, Jackie's answer to that question and all of the other questions, I will also put that in the chat window. So full Jackie Lind casting director video oh. there you go uh, and so the links for both of those videos are in uh, the chat window right now I think both of them um, don't show up in the the list uh, because they are they're unlisted uh, meaning I can share them with you because they said I was allowed but I can't post them everywhere to be like look at what Jackie Lynn said everybody on the internet go see so uh, there's my like using other people's voices to back me up to talk about you know, what a good self-tape looks like. Uh, the, maybe the only thing that didn't come up super clearly is uh, eye light. So let me see if I can find somebody who's got, yeah, perfect. So Sophia here uh, is uh, backlit and she has no light reflected in her eyes. So that means that she just can look more dead. If she was doing a self-tape, it would be really important that she set up her camera so that the window was behind the camera so that the window was reflected in her eyes and get a nice highlight. And look, she's got that like great blue wall back behind her. She could probably you know, kill two birds with one stone, but it would be creative. Like she might have to stack a chair on the coffee table and then a box on the chair and then the computer. But like, nobody knows. It's just like a real film set. The only part that needs to look real is the part right behind you. All of this stuff out here can be a complete mess. And that's also consistent with actually being on set. The only part that looks real is the part behind you that the camera's looking at. Out here, you've got like 18 crew members in a giant crane and a bunch of weird lights. None of that looks real. So the actor's always having to do this imaginary job. But like that's just the part of the way that works. Uh, so let's take a look at a couple of uh, at the scripts, or the first of the scripts uh, that I'm gonna look at today. Uh, so the first one uh, involves young folks, and I hope I've got some like enthusiastic young folks who wanna you know, help me out. Um, the, uh, uh, but you're gonna need to be on your feet. You know, so Sophia, if you like, I would love it if you help me out here, but you would need to like stand up. Yeah, perfect, Ava, and you would need to like adjust your camera, because right now your camera's totally sideways, Ava. You know, the uh, twins, you could totally do this. In fact, you could both do it together, but you'd need to be standing up. Just, just saying, just saying. Um, okay, so this is from a, a silly comedy called The John Doerr Show. Uh, happiness with one S, either because they can't spell or they, it's a joke that I don't get. Um, the sides, scene six. John looks down his list and reads the next quality, which is volunteering. John hears music a la ice cream truck. A, a truck pulls into frame. The side of the truck reads blood mobile. John, it's the blood truck. I'm gonna donate blood. A couple of children excitedly approach the truck as well. Blood, yay, I want to donate. Mommy, mommy, can we donate blood? Yay. So some dude is like, hey, it's the blood truck. You, uh, you notice the blood truck, you're excited. Yay, I wanna donate. The physicality here, super important. So one of the things that I've been talking about on Monday is if you are going to tell this story, most of the folks, uh, and the younger the um, performers are, the more likely they are to just say the lines and do none of the rest of it. The further along you are in terms of you know, um, skilled professional work, the more likely they are to bring all the life of the scene in between. You know, but again, if you bring that, then potentially either if you're a young person, it makes you, it's a strong competitive advantage because you're like, I'm not just doing the words, I'm doing the rest of it as well. Uh, if you are a more seasoned actor, you know, then maybe you don't have the credits yet, but you can make your work look like theirs does by bringing in some of that next level. And this is just a fun, silly one. So I'm going to throw the, uh, the lines there in the chat window, just so that you've got it to look at. Kids, lines, or... Oops. Okay, it doesn't want to copy. 
that is. There it is. Ta-da! Blood. Yay. I want to donate. Mommy, mommy, can we donate blood? Yay. Notice that I didn't put this here, uh, but the writer put five, five exclamation points after yay. Uh, now, one of the things uh, that I really love and is going to be super relevant uh, when we start working on the adult scene, which is a short scene from The Flash, uh, is the incredible accessibility of YouTube. You know, so again, most of the people who say this line are just going to say it. They're just going to be like, yay! You know, and, the, and then some of them are going to add physicality. But check out what we can find if we just go to YouTube uh, and, uh, and write in uh, kids excited about ice cream truck. Right? If you're that excited about the blood truck, then it's funny. Right? It's supposed to be a joke. The kids are like, ah! Ridiculously excited about giving blood, which of course, like, no kid is ever going to be, but it's a joke. It's a comedy sh sketch show. Uh, you know, same thing. You know, this one, like, she's, he's not shrieking, but look at the physicality on this kid. <laughs> right, just like just the dancing kid, you know, the so you don't even have to invent this stuff. You know, like great. I mean, if you if if you are full of inventive ideas, fantastic. But like YouTube has a million ideas for you. So if you're like, I don't know, what does that look like? Look it up. You know, and yeah, if an older if you're older uh, as a uh, if you're a young person, then you're like, well, yeah, I'm 13. I'm never going to get that excited. Yeah, it's a joke. It's a funny joke. So if you're like six year old excited about it, even though you're like 13 and look like you should be too cool for that, that's extra funny for everyone, for people your age and for who are gonna be like, ah, cringy. And for adults, we're like, ha ah. ha. You know, but the whole point of something like this is to make people laugh. Good, so, Sophia, I see you standing up. You wanna do this? Okay, it, it's fine if the line, it doesn't have to be exactly right. You're just gonna say blood, yay. I wanna donate, mommy, mommy, can we donate blood, yay. I may say blood yum. <laughs> no, 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 because you're not eating the blood. You're giving blood. It's like donating blood. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, hang on, let me spotlight you, Sophia. Uh, and let's talk about eye lines. Eye lines are the imaginary line between your eyes and what you're looking at. I'm going to go right to one side of the screen. So look at me, right? So if I'm, I'm the truck, you know, because that's where you're going to be looking at the most. And then just the other side of the uh, screen, just the other side of the screen, that's where your mommy is, okay? Good, now start further away so that you have a chance to like run up towards the blood truck. You know, good, yeah, yeah, and like you can squeal, you can dance, you can take your time, stand by, and uh, <gasps> it's the blood truck, I'm gonna donate. That's my line and then you go. Okay, good. So let's do it again, uh, stand by. Uh, so remember the adult guy you know, who has this line right before yours? Uh, and he says, uh, it's the blood truck, I'm going to donate blood. Uh, stand by, and action. It's the blood truck, I'm gonna donate. Blood? Yay! I don't know, can I do, monkey, can I donate? And then your big yay with five exclamation points, yay, and, and squeal, squeal, squeal. <laughs> She's squealing so loud that her microphone's cutting it out, but perfect. Uh, the, Right, and it's it's fun, it's silly, that's exactly the thing. Okay, Ava, I know you wanted to try it too, right? Good, uh, so you're gonna have to unmute yourself. I'm gonna spotlight you. Uh, stand by, and action. Hey, it's the blood truck. I'm gonna donate. Uh, oh, wait, uh -oh. what's the line again? I forgot it. <laughs> blood, yay. I want to donate. Mommy, mommy, can we donate blood? Yay. But basically, as long as you're doing lots of shrieking and excitement, then that works. Uh, stand by and action. Uh, hey, it's the blood truck. Oh, I want to donate. Blood! I want to donate. Mommy, mommy, can we donate? Yay! Yay! Good. <laughs> And then that's a great example because you see Ava is too far back from the camera for us to see detail. So we're seeing her whole body. Remember how they said, definitely do it wide and not long. This is a great example of why you never ever want to tape the way that she is currently taping. 
you always want to tape widthwise so then you can get up much much closer because she was doing really fun stuff but we couldn't see her eyes like we actually couldn't see it even though we could hear it you know so the it's a great example it's exactly why i want to do these things um, we've only got about 10 minutes left and the next one's a little bit more complicated you know, so um the unless there's somebody who's like oh my god i'm super keen to do the blood truck one there's nobody nobody's like okay nobody's dying for it Great, let's do the flash. <laughs> Linda's like, meh, torn. Uh, here we go. Uh, so the, this is uh, one is from uh, the flash. I've chosen another one with a lot of physicality. And now we're not going through like, you know, what does it mean? And what are the questions? And you know, we're gonna do uh, that in more detail with the script tomorrow. You know, and, uh, and I have a, a whole plan you know, for, oh, what is my plan for tomorrow? I wonder, let's find out, Uncle Dean. Uh, tomorrow's plan is, oh yeah, how to make yourself feel stuff. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, extend uh, the empathy conversation, talk about uh, substitution and personalization, connecting things to your life and to your imagination. But it was like sort of the simple, simple language is like how to make yourself feel stuff. Uh, I'm going to need some uh, you know, uh, adult folks to demo this next one for me because it's an ER doctor. Uh, and uh, the perfect, you know, and you're just gonna need to be standing up you know, for when you do it, so. Here we go. Uh, interior, Central City Hospital, emergency room at night. The double doors burst open. Barry is wheeled into the emergency room, surrounded by paramedics and ER staff. Uh, right, so this is the pilot, page 17, you know, so it's early on in the script. That is a very flattering freeze frame of me. Um, the, uh, so nurse one, uh, pulse ox is 80%, 70. He's an SVT, ER doctor, CBC, Chem 24, type and cross four, bag him. Iris runs in, frightened. You can't be in here. We're family. He's coding, charge the paddles to 200, clear, Barry, crackoom, as electrical energy surges into Barry's unconscious body. It, so, the, uh, so if we are uh, looking at that, uh, let's take a, a look at the, uh, some of the language in the script. You know, and so I'm gonna very quickly show you what I found on YouTube and on the internet, just so you know that it doesn't have to take more than a couple of minutes. There's a bunch of medical terms in here. We've got pulse ox, okay, that's oxygen. That one we can guess. SVT, I got no idea, I had to look it up. CBC, Chem 24, type and cross four. I don't know what those things mean. Bag him, I'm gonna assume that means put like on one of those little IV bags. Um, the, he's coding, I've heard it before, but I looked it up for you just uh, to make sure. Charge the paddles, you know, what does that mean? Okay, it's a defibrillator. You know, but again, you don't have to know these things because you can go looking for them. So let's uh, take a quick blitz through YouTube, uh, and then we're going to, uh, going to get uh, the uh, adults to charge the paddles to 200 clear. So adult line, charge, charge the paddles to 200 clear. Yeah, and so the, uh, this is a, uh, my baseline with physicality is first, you know, try it exactly the way it's written and see if it works. You know, then keep everything below the edge of the frame and try it there you know, and see if it works. You know, and, that, and with this, like unless, even if you had paddles, you wouldn't want to use them. Right? Like you could have a couple of hairbrushes and rub them up here and it's just going to look weird. So as long as you keep it below the edge of the frame, you know, but it's important to do the physicality. Because if you just say, you're charging the paddles to 200, clear, you're not telling us the story. Right? And, and you're certainly not bringing in the urgency. And the, a lot of the urgency here comes with the way you tell that story with your body. You know, so uh, if we quickly blitzed through uh, Michael Bean's YouTube research, we would find this. Once we had enough help, we got him out of the car and right onto the stretcher. As right. soon as I jumped on top of him and started performing CPR. Right. I see all these people running out. and panicked and freaking out and the lady jumps on top of his chest and starts giving him CPR. Okay, that level of urgency. Uh, right, then we've got people using a defibrillator, another uh, defibrillator in use. And I started by uh, searching like paddles, heart. You know, you don't need to know the right words. You just have to do a little bit of creative searching. 
uh, manual defibrillation. Anything connected to the patient. Press shock button simultaneously Boom. located on the pedals. Okay, so press, thump, up. Great, it didn't take long. Now I know how they actually work. I've seen it on TV, but now I'm looking at uh, one of the um, like product things. Uh, then I did a search of uh, medical terms and abbreviations. You know, I found, uh, because I wanted to look some of these up, so I looked up chem, okay, chemistry, uh, SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. What? And so what is supraventricular tachycardia? It's abnormal fast heart rhythm arising from blah, 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 important technical stuff. Okay, so it's really, really, your heart's going really, really fast. SVT, that's what it means. CBC, probably not Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, complete blood count. So again, I just looked up medical terms and I found the Merriam-Webster Medical Dictionary online. Uh, what does Chem24 mean? Chemistry 24 profile, American Metabolic Testing Laboratories. There it is, second thing. Uh, what does type and cross four mean? Okay, it's probably not Christian cross variants. Blood types exp explained, okay. Uh, what does it mean if a patient is coding? Coded patient is one who's not breathing or has no pulse. Boom, you know, the, uh, I mean, I can show it to you in two minutes. You know, it took me maybe five. Uh, but then I've got everything that I need uh, to understand these technical terms. You know, so then I can look at this. I'm like, great. So his oxygen is at 80%, 70. So his, his um, oxygen, his blood is going down. His heart's going crazy fast. The doctor comes in, takes charge and says, uh, oh man, what was the, you know, CBC again? It was like, uh, uh, that's right here. CBC, complete blood count. Right? The, the doctor comes in and says, you know, uh, complete blood count, uh, chem, uh, uh, chem 24, you know, so like get his blood chemistry test, uh, figure out his blood type, bag him. Right? He's coding, his heart has stopped, or he's not breathing, charge the paddle to 200. Clear, it's underlined, and there's an exclamation point. Okay. So if you are uh, one of the adults who's going to demo this for us, you know, uh, what are you doing right before this, right? Are you, che uh, are you checking him in some way? Uh, the, uh, or do you see that he's coding before or after the nurse says, I'll give you the um, nurse's line he's coding, you know, and then you'll say charge the paddles to 200 clear, but <clears throat> can you tell us that you are a doctor, you're a professional, you're dealing with this situation, you know, uh, it's urgent, can you tell us that story with your body before you say the line? <clears throat> so that we're getting not just the lines that they've given you, but also the life of the scene. Uh, Linda, I know you wanted to demo this for us, so let's start with you. Now, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Okay, here we go. Okay, great. Uh, and I'll give you a couple of seconds to start with your physicality. Stand by, and action. Okay. He's coming. I don't... Uh, I don't see the script. Uh, the, the line is charge the paddles to 200. Clear? That, that's, oh, that's sorry, I, I didn't see the script there. Um, oh, okay. No, no, no that, I put it in the chat window because I, I want everybody looking at you and not at the script. Oh, oh, I'm so, sorry. Okay. So the line is charge the paddles to 200. That is ellipsis dot 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 clear and it's underlined with an exclamation point. Okay. Uh, so um, don't go off camera where we can't see you. If you need to reach for something, reach off camera, but do not let your face or, uh, or, or body go off camera. Does that make well, sense? My, my apologies. I thought we were coming in from the beginning and we were bursting no, through the we're door. No, we're just gonna do uh, that one line you know, for uh, the, the demo, just because I don't want you to have to worry about the more complicated dialogue. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, and, and even if it was the very start of the scene, I would say start there at the edge of the frame. Because if it gets uploaded to Ecocast, uh, which is Breakdown Services, uh, Ecocast uses the very first frame as the keyframe or as the um, like the picture, and you want to make sure that instead that they're not like Linda, who's this blank wall named Linda, right? They, they're like who's Linda again? You know that. So I would say always make sure that your face is present, and if you're walking in, just walk in from the corner to the middle, and that's enough. That's enough to do walking in for us. So stand by. 
So you're already dealing with the patient. Uh, stand by and action. He's coding. Charge the paddles to 200. Clear. Great. Good. Let's do it again. You know, uh, the, uh, keep the compressions down below where the, uh, the edge of the frame. And, and the paddles, they're not on the wall. They're right in front of you. They're below the edge of the frame. And you're not going to bring your empty hands up into the shot. Oh, right, so okay. You're, All right. you're, so you're never going to show us the fake thing. You're going to let us believe that you actually have all this equipment in your hands. Yeah, and cheat a little bit too low. There you go. Basically, what I usually say to students is keep everything at waist level. If everything's at waist level, you know, it's like it's really easy for you to know, okay, there's my waist, and then you don't have to think about it. Stand by. Charge the bottles, okay. Uh, stand by. You're already doing the compressions. And action. He's coding. Charge the paddles to 200. Clear. And that's it. That's the whole thing. Great. Yeah, and then I would say, if we were going to do it again, you would cheat your eyeline closer to camera. You would put the body maybe just below the edge of the frame or like where the tripod is, and then you would have the nurse right beside the camera, just so we could see more of your eyes the whole time. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, that's, that's why you take class, right? That's why so that you can learn. <laughs> um, Candy, I see you standing up. Does that mean you're going to help me out? Oh, you're not standing up. Do you want to? Yeah, do it. You're gonna need to unmute yourself. Uh, okay, sorry, I... Oh, I see. And with the, um, we'll we'll go fast because we're we're just you know uh, we're just over time. I didn't realize that. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Good. So the line is charge the pedals to 200. Clear. You're going to come closer. You're going to come much closer because you want everything to be down below. Exactly. And you can hunch down. That's fine. You're bending over the, the body of the patient right now. That works. Just keep it all down there. You know, now jump up and down a couple of times. Just, just you, Candy, actually knees up, knees up, knees up, jump, 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 knees up, get your knees up, knees, jump, 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 jump. And so what we're doing is we're getting her heart rate up and then she doesn't have to pretend to be escalated. She can actually be escalated. She can be trying to calm herself down, but her body's like, <clears throat> good. Now start, pump, start pumping the guys, you know, uh, giving the guy the chest compressions. Closer, closer, closer. Need to see more of your eyes and the eye lines closer to camera, closer to camera, the eye lines closer to camera. No, your eyes are going to come closer to the middle of your screen. There you go. Good. And then down, 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 eyes down, down, your eyes. There we go. That's him. Stand by. And compressions don't go that fast. It's okay. one. <laughs> boom. It's okay. You didn't watch the video as much as I did. Here, just give him some space in between to see if his heart's going to start beating. Stand by. And look at the body. Look at the body. Start doing the compressions when you hear stand by. Start acting when you hear stand by. Stand by. So I'm gonna tell you again, start acting when you hear stand by, because they're gonna say stand by, and then they're gonna roll camera, and then they're gonna say action. So if you wait for action to start acting, then what we see is exactly that, is like, I'm an actor and I'm politely waiting for things, something to happen. Stand by, and action. Charge the coding. Clear. <laughs> Great, perfect. And see, most of the tapes they're gonna get are gonna be like that. Okay. Yeah, and, so, and so if instead you do the one that Linda gave us, you know, it's a strong competitive advantage. Okay. And Candy can totally do that by just spending some time watching YouTube. Okay. Uh, I kept you over a couple of minutes again. Uh, thank you for sticking around. Uh, the, I'm going to give you all the power to unmute yourselves so that anybody needs to uh, wave goodbye can do so. Uh, hopefully some of uh, this was useful. And then I'm going to stick around until 4.15 to answer questions. Mm -hmm. Bye, all the people who need to leave. Thank you. My Bye. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And then, bye. Uh, and then anybody who's got questions, they don't have to be about the lesson. They can be about anything that's on your mind. Uh, we've had some fantastic questions that I wouldn't have thought you know, to, uh, to answer uh, come up in the last couple of weeks. So uh, what is it that you would like me to talk about today? You know, you can just, there's a few enough of us that you can just, you know, I have a question. Deborah, please. Yeah, Michael, I'm just wondering, it just came across my mind, can we get onto our own Zoom
page like this and by yourself and practice like that, or is it just going to be into our little cameras? I uh, zoom uh, lets you do free sessions of up to thirty minutes. Yeah, so up to 30 you, minutes. Yeah, so if you create a Zoom account, you'll be able to. As long as you don't mind like breaking every thirty minutes, you can call any friend, any anybody. You can have one of your nieces or nephews read the scenes with you. Like, awesome. and, and if you're hosting the session, you can record them and yeah. they'll just show up on your desktop, and you'll have those. Awesome. Awesome. So, Thank you. so I've I've done some um, Zoom uh, coachings with friends where they've just recorded the tapes themselves. Yeah, you know, and then they've used the Zoom recordings as their taped auditions. Totally. Uh -huh. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, Linda. It's, uh, I don't know if it's a technical question, but um, I have one of those pop-up backgrounds. So that's my gray background, and it has a blue side like your blue side. Mm -hmm. Do you know if the local casting directors have a preference for blue or gray? Uh, I... Does this background? <laughs> I, I've never heard them say um, one way or the other. You know, like a couple oh, okay. of casting directors who came in said, led with, you know, if you got blue, that's great, but that might be because my background is blue and that's just what they saw. And so they said it. Um, yeah. You can see in Maureen's thing, it says, you know, blue is great, gray is great. Da, da, da. So I would say go with whichever color makes you look better. Okay. Right? Like the, like, how, does, exactly. how does this background make me look? <laughs> <laughs> Does it make me look fat? Uh, take a picture of both of them, you know, and, uh, and and email them to me. And next lesson, we'll hold, I'll uh, we'll look at them side by side. Oh, you know, okay, sure. I, I think that yeah. would be great. Yeah, I'll make a note. I uh, because that's useful for everybody you know, to see what that uh, kind of testing looks like. Yeah, and um, and that's the same goes for lighting. Actually, like one of them, the students in my Monday class who just like always looks fantastic on camera. And like every Monday I'm like, Jess, why does Jess look so great? Like does she have better cheekbones than the rest of us? What's going on? And so finally the last class I had her like show us her setup and she was just using warmer lights than everybody else. Everybody else was using uh, either like natural light or fluorescent <laughs> light and she ha was using some warmer lights. Now Deborah's are probably a little bit too warm. You can see that she's yeah. sort of like glowing amber. Yeah. Um, you know, but but mine are you know not quite warm enough, right? If I had mm -hmm. like a some kind of warm light here, and her setup was so janky, it was so it was like it was a chair on top of a coffee table with a box of string <laughs> lights in the box, you know, all pointed towards her with like a big desk lamp, you know, or like a floor lamp that was just pointed in her face, and then like a window in the background for film. But like, I don't know, man. She's just done so much experimenting in her apartment that she's found this like perfect lighting spot um I, if you got a minute i can i can turn my camera around and show you what mine is sure you know if, the, if there's no other questions from so there's my i don't know if you can see it there's oh, my yeah, yeah. See? right like and then my light and then my sheet and i have the i have a bed tent so that's hanging off the bed tent frame awesome so Anyways, right, like, it can be so janky nobody knows like if we're just looking at linda's tape we're like wow that's really yeah. Like she's got it down. And also, here's two things as well. I'm a little bit nearsighted, so I end up with a big head close up, and I'm also trying to follow the um, the rule of thirds so that my eyes are in the top third of the frame. Yeah, right? and that's why I usually say just make sure there's no space over your head and, yeah. and yeah. down to your armpits, and that totally does that. Yeah. Uh, questions from anybody else? Yeah. Um. Sorry, I should raise my hand before I just. Um. When you're acting, how do you add emotion to it? Like you still have to worry about how you like do the actions, but you still have to have emotions. Like you have to balance two at the same time, and then sometimes you're stressing out about one, and then you have to like the other one doesn't turn out good, and then sometimes you're worrying about the other one, and the other one doesn't. Turn out good. You should so, come back tomorrow because uh, you know, I'm going to talk about that in detail. Um, but I'm going to give you the reminder of the same thing that I said when you asked this question last Tuesday, you know, which is that. Um, Yes, we want, we want it to be, for film and TV especially, you want it to be completely believable and you want it to be expressive. You know, but if you have to choose one, choose completely believable. Because it doesn't matter how expressive it is if we don't believe it. And then when you've got a foundation, and I get it, like maybe you're just like, but believable is boring, I want to feel things. Great, do monologues, keep feeling things for practice, like do that for you. But in terms of like what's going to help you in film and TV, get a really solid foundation of being completely believable. And then from that place, then you can start to 
have specific relationships with people, places, and things. And then this is the same answer that I gave you Tuesday. But you can ask again and again and again. I will continue to give you this answer in different ways until one day you're just like, oh my God, I get it. Just be totally believable and have specific relationships. <gasps> Why did nobody tell this to me? And that's when like in the, somewhere in the distance, I'll be like, uh, <laughs> but that's how acting works, right? It's, if it was as easy as just hearing it once and then you did it, like it, everybody be doing it. You know, it, understanding it here and understanding it here are different. You might have to hear it two times or 10 times or 28 times. Like you might have to practice it in the scene study class for two years. And then one morning you will, you'll wake up and be washing dishes and you'll be like, wait, I get it. Like there is no rhyme or reason to that. You know, the, I think that the, the most profound like epiphanies or discoveries uh, that actors tend to have are often extremely simple things. You know, but it's when it goes from here to here. And that's the goal. Like we want it to be so internalized that you're not thinking about it while you're doing it. You know, and, and that's gonna take time. You know, in the same way that if you were jumping hurdles, you wouldn't be effective at jumping hurdles if you had to think about what your legs were doing each time, right? Like it's complicated physical motion. You, know, the, you wouldn't really be able to be competitive at it until you got your body to the point where it could just do that on its own. And then you could put your attention on like honing the last little details. Does that make sense? You know, so, the, so for the moment, my suggestion is keep focusing on, am I talking the way I normally talk? Like, does this sound like my voice? Am I not putting anything extra on it? And then from there, you can play with, okay, and we're gonna go into this some more tomorrow. Like, okay, what if I'm saying this line to my mom? Okay, what if I'm saying this line to uh, like the police officer, you know, who is like stopped me on the street because he thinks, you know, that like I'm, you know, uh, in, and I'm worried I'm in trouble, right? Like the, you know, and so instead of like, I'm going to think about how I feel, which is almost always going to make you self-conscious, you start thinking about who am I talking to? What is that relationship? What is that specific opinion or strong feeling about that person? And then, and the feeling comes out of that. And it's like, it's kind of, um, it's, this is what's fun about it, right? Because you're like, okay, so the result I want is scared. But if I just play scared, it's going to look fake. In the same way that if uh, like I'm meeting uh, George for the first time and I'm like, George, hi, I want to show you how happy I am. They'd be like, ooh, don't trust that guy. Like he's trying way too hard, right? So instead I've got to go like, okay, what do I have to imagine about George so that I'm really happy to see him? It's like, oh, right. I feel about George the way I do about my friend Sarah, who like I never get to see. You know, and I'm super excited when she like sneak gets a sneak away from her. Like she's got a toddler, so like I really never see her. But if I, but when I do, I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, and it's like, and it's got depth because now I'm just looking at George the way I look at Sarah. You know, and so it's it's not just happy. You know, it's I have a specific relationship to George. And then I would watch that back and be like, mm, actually, you know what? That's too sweet. You know, like the way that's coming across on camera is too sweet. So Sarah's probably the wrong person. For me to use there. Actually, I need to feel about George the way I feel about you know, you know this teacher who I really respect. So I'm like super happy to see him, but it's like you know, more. Mm. That's the technical term. You know, once we start getting to talking about feelings, I I just don't believe in in the, the right words for it. I don't believe in doing the essay. You know, I, and I this is one of the reasons I love talking about it instead of writing about it. Like when you write about it, it often sounds like that it's got to be really concrete. When you talk about it, you get to go like, you know, it's like, and people are like, oh yeah, I know what that means. Okay, cool. So it's like, yeah, cool, we'll do that. Uh, any more questions before we wrap up? Yeah, I have one more. Um, so I am facing a window in my room. I'm facing a great big window, so that's not good. No, that should be that should be really good. My uh, my thought, uh, I think. Probably, I think I have a, a, a filter or something that I don't. I got to learn how to get off. Maybe it's also possible yeah. that you just have your overhead lights on, and and you just need to turn off the overhead lights in your room because right now, right. especially your hair is glowing extremely. You know, okay. So, uh, so it might be that you just need to like get closer, turn off the overhead lights, get a desk lamp, and put it right in front of you for a little bit of extra eye light. I'd try okay. that first. You know, yeah. So you're coming okay. tomorrow. You try that and let's see. If yeah, I'll try that and we'll see. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks everybody for sticking around. Uh, come back tomorrow and we'll talk about uh, more details about how to feel stuff. Awesome. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.